end up in a potential energy savings. At 600 billion, um, I think that's, is that euros or pounds? I think it's euros, isn't it? So uh, that's a very significant, significant amount of money. And that's really trying to make the business case for having companies uh, adopt a green strategy. So here you see some more uh, numbers. Again, this is based on the study that was done, SMART 2020. Um, I won't go through all these numbers. And here you see, again, um, what this is looking at, again, is some of the targets that already exist. For example, the European Union, all of its members are subject to the Kyoto Protocol, has recently announced the 20% reduction target compared to 1990 levels for 2020. I think what's key with these targets is that under Kyoto, countries have a national target. And what's happening is that some governments in some countries are deciding to apply these targets to the ICT sector. And there are some people, of course, as you know, scientists who think these reductions are not enough and, and much more needs to be done. So again, I think uh, in the interest of time, I won't, won't try and explain all these slides. But again, the, the figure is about fivefold, that ICT can save five times what it consumes. I think that's the, the key conclusion of the report. Um, you've heard these are, uh, meant, there are many different ways in which ICT can, can reduce emissions in other sectors. And for example, the European Union has come up with five priority areas. Uh, this report suggests some other priority areas, such as smart buildings, uh, which uh, there's a very st striking lack of standards for the use of ICTs to produce smart buildings, better supply chain management, uh, e-commerce, et cetera. And here you see more information about the, the uh, smart motors is another, uh, another keys in this report, another key area to apply ICTs. Dematerialization, replacing uh, things with bits, smart logistics, et cetera, et cetera. And the smart power grid as well. So here is the, uh, the impact of, of, of some of these phenomenon. Again, there's a lot of uh, estimations about how much emissions could be reduced through, through video conferencing, telecommuting, e-commerce, e-paper, and online media. And here are some of the key priority are smart motor systems, uh, an, they looked at a couple of case studies. So one case study was the use of smart motors in China. And there are some very significant projections about how much emissions could be reduced by using smart motors. Smart logistics, including smart supply chain management. And there are, again, a number of projections and estimations. I'm going through this a bit quickly, but this will all be posted online. And this, uh, it, a very similar version to this presentation can also be found on our two uh, climate change symposia from Kyoto and London. So I know particularly it was at the one in Kyoto. You can find it there. Smart logistics in Europe. But again, this same principle can be applied globally. And as you saw from the presentation from, from Japan, it's already being applied in Japan as well. And they've made their own estimations. Smart buildings. And there are, again, uh, examples throughout the world where this approach is being taken to make buildings that are much more energy efficient. A smart building, the example they used, the case study was in North America. Smart energy grids, another important priority area for the use of ICTs. Uh, the example they used, and I think this one is particularly relevant, was the use of, of smart grids in India, and the growth of power generation. And this is, this is quite a bit of detail about the Indian system, uh, which I won't go through. But you can see that there's a tremendous, uh, again, based on this study, there's tremendous room for improvement of the Indian power grid to make it much more energy efficient. And all of this, of course, requires the use of ICTs to, to enhance the system. And they can be used in almost every, every step in the system to increase the system. And then generally, uh, the uh, technologies short-term, medium-term, long-term. Of course, smart grids is one of the keys because the grids themselves use so much electricity. This, this use is increasing. And so much of it is from non-renewable sources. Smart opportunities. And this is, this is a recommendations as the steps that, that governments can follow to become more energy efficient. 
Uh, this is uh, some new, uh, there's a lot of new information here, so again, we'll post this, this presentation. It's been upgraded quite a bit. Um, this is something we started in the ITU as well, is to look at some of the voluntary commitments that companies have made. As you know, most uh, major ICT companies are publicly traded companies. They produce annual reports, and if you look through those reports, which we've done, you will find that many of them have made promises as to how they're going to reduce their emissions. Uh, many CEOs have made public statements about this. So this is a list of, of some of these statements and commitments. In fact, C Cisco is on here, as is British Telecom, Dell. Uh, this is the commitment from Jesse to develop an agreed industry-wide methodology. And in fact, in that effort, they're working very closely with the ITU. Uh, put more emphasis on climate change issues in supply chain work. Uh, ensure that these matters are fully considered by organizations that set technical standards. And that certainly, uh, as I mentioned earlier, you saw the resolution from Johannesburg that uh, this work is now one of the high priorities in the ITU, and in particular the need to develop the right standards. Uh, work with organizations in key opportunity areas. Again, it's a question of setting priorities as to how to, right now, where to start to best use ICTs to reduce emissions in other sectors. And of course, work with public policy makers. So I think those are all those are Jesse commitments, but they're also things that this co coalition could also be involved in, in bringing this kind of message to the, to the various different entities that are, that are named here. I think they just, they're in Brussels now. They recently moved. So this is the Jesse in contact information. So with my apologies to Luis Nevis, that's, that's his uh, presentation. I really had hoped that we would have been able to, uh, to, sh to have him make that from Bonn, but um, I'm, I, as you can see, the technology is still working out the kinks, so maybe next year we'll be able to do that a little bit more easily. So I'd like to again open the floor for discussion about, uh, I, have, I think I'm beginning to develop a couple of points of things that we can do as a group, but I'd certainly like to hear more input and thoughts about you know, concrete suggestions about what we can do. Yes, Heather, please. Um, yeah, just the Where's the a microphone, please? I, want, I, I know that you're working on this. I'm trying to figure out how to ask this question um, without having to get into a lot of background explore, explanation for everyone else in the room who may not be as familiar with some of the mechanisms of carbon tax and cap and trade and so on. But our, I, it would be useful for you to talk a little bit about what is happening right now in terms of the sector's negotiation of, of cap and trade. Um, cap and trade, for, for those of you who may not be as familiar with it, is the idea of setting a global cap on emissions, but then companies can negotiate within that in terms of those who are actually reducing emissions or not emitting as much get a credit. They can sell that credit to a company that may be exceeding their emissions. The challenge here is that the, the, the message is that overall the ICT sector emissions may go up. Um, they don't necessarily get credit though for the downstream result of reducing other people's emissions. So ICT emissions go up, but there's a net drop because of the efficiencies gained from the sector in other industries. So, but, but cap and trade doesn't yet account for that. So maybe if you could talk a little bit about how the sector is, is trying to negotiate that challenge. And, and obviously for them, carbon tax won't work because carbon tax is just a net, uh, just, just a straight hit on everybody. So they don't get any kind of benefit um, from, from actually helping other people to reduce their emissions. It's certainly a thorny problem. Um, well, the negotiate, uh, just a couple of points. Uh, the negotiations are still in the early stages to the new global agreement. Um, but from what I've heard, one of the few things they've agreed on is to, is to maintain the cap and trade system. And this, again, the system, as you mentioned, where if you have exceed a certain amount of pollution, you can get credit by, by investing in projects in other parts of the world that are, are energy efficient. And that system already exists. It's, um, it's, some are critical of it, of course, that the projects really aren't that worthwhile, but it, it's a system that exists, and apparently it will continue. So this will be one of the elements of the new agreement. 
It's one of the very few things we know because most of there's uh, still very, uh, very little detail yet on what the new agreement might look like, and there's really no draft existing. But that was one of the first agreements that were made. In the negotiations as well, I think we've already talked about the fact that, that ICTs are not getting as much prominence as probably the people in this room think they should. There were a couple of governments that would like to see sector-specific approaches. So right now under Kyoto, governments have a national a national target. They don't have sector-specific targets. There are a few countries that favor sector-specific targets, but I think it's early days to see whether that will make it into a final agreement, and the sense right now is that it won't, that it does not have enough support to make it into a final agreement. Um, so I think uh, the third part of it is that this is part of what we're trying to do in the ITU. Uh, when we're looking at methodologies, you know, it's, 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 not, an easy, it's not an easy task. I'm hoping we'll come up with some pretty good solutions by April in the sense of having methodologies that look at not only how you know, the, the effect on emissions of, re, of re, reducing uh, in the ICT sector itself, but how do you, in essence, get credit for the use of ICTs in other sectors? We have been looking at that. Uh, we've had a lot of discussion of that, and I think it'll be a difficult uh, problem to solve, frankly. But I'm hoping that we will have some pretty good preliminary results by next April. And again, I would, I would really invite you, we had, um, uh, we had the focus group meeting in Geneva last week, and there are some excellent, excellent uh, presentations, probably more than we would have liked, but we have a wealth of material now. We have about 70 written contributions, some are quite long, but some of them address that question and have some very interesting proposals. The trick now will be that uh, there are different approaches. When you look at, for example, the commitments that have been made by different ICT companies, what we would have liked to have done a scorecard but you can't do it because they, they report the information in different ways. And that's, one of, that's also part of our work, to try and find a common approach so that you're, you're measuring apples and apples and not apples and oranges. Yes, please. Just a novice question. My name is Izumi Aizu from the Institute for Infosocionomics of Tama University. Um, are there any other agencies like ITU in, you know, working on a sector-based approach in the international community, as well as are there vendors association of sort also in line with ITU, or I haven't seen them. I, I didn't. Sorry, I didn't have the, the last part of your question. Are there vendor association or the manufacturers ah, okay. of the you know ICTs? Are, are they in line with you guys? Well, I think uh, since we're in a sort of UN type uh, forum here, I'd have to say there's probably no UN agency that would say that it's not involved in climate change. So. There's, the UN is trying very much to deliver a unified product to, to governments. That's one of the been the longstanding uh, hope to what we call delivering as one. So, for example, in the post in Poland right now, the UN has submitted one report on what the UN system is doing. And if you look at that report, you'll see that UN agencies are involved in almost every every aspect of human endeavor, from housing to the environment to to labor markets to refugee issues to human rights. They're all touched by climate change. And so each agency in its own way is, is doing its part. And of course, IT was the main agency for ICTs. As far as, uh, as, far as working with the vendors and, and operators, I have to stress again that uh, IT goes back to 1865. We were the first intergovernmental organization. And as early as 1871, we had private companies working in the ITU. So we have two categories of membership, member states. And we do have a few treaties. And of course, only governments can, can be parties to treaties. And we have 191 member states, so we're, we're global, we're universal. There's almost no country that's not a member of ITU. But we have more than 600 private companies that, have been, that are called sector members. They have uh, very significant rights. And we've had them since 1871. We always hope to have more sector members. But in the area of standards, they take the lead role. If you look at the contributions to the focus group, for example, um, they're from Alcatel-Lucent, they're from Samsung, they're from Sony, they're from Hitachi, uh, from, from Opera, from companies all over the world. And again, I would stress that the focus group is completely open so that any of you in this room can participate in the focus group and make contributions. If I may, what yes. I meant is like, you know, Wichita or the ITAA or these trade associations, mm -hmm. you know, focusing on the IT or ICT areas, are you working with them or not? Or are they coming to work with you? You know, it depends on the subject. But again, in the, in the area of climate change, we're trying to be as open as possible. So when we've had our, we had our symposium in Kyoto and London, we invited uh, speakers from 
from groups, from trade associations that are not members of ITU. And the same with the focus group. Any, any entity, any person is, is open and is, can participate. These meetings are all been webcast and anybody can make a written contribution. The only caveat I would say is that we are now s establishing deadlines uh, for, for contributions, but it's a very open process. Yes, Tony. Yeah, I just wanted to, uh, uh, you just were talking about the sector members, and um, I'm just curious with the resolution that was recently adopted, I'm assuming that that was, on the, uh, that was for governmental members only, but um, I might be wrong. Did, the, the sector members participate in that resolution at all, and uh, in in terms of the of the targets for mm -hmm. for uh, you know, climate change in ICTs. Well, I mean, the way the resolution is generated, there was uh, it was tabled by there were very there were different proposals from governments. A number of governments made proposals for a resolution. I don't want to talk so much about IT because I think I, I want to focus on the coalition, but I'm happy to answer the question. Um, the way it works at, at an assembly or at a plenipotentiary conference is that the governments made the proposals. In terms of a resolution on climate change, there were some different viewpoints. Uh, some of the proposals came from regional groups of governments. Um, in, the in the discussions about the resolution, sector members, our private companies, were open and, and certainly able to participate in the discussions. In fact, the, uh, the person who led the discussions to come out with a, 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 the final result of the resolution was from British Telecom. So British Telecom led the negotiations toward that resolution. Formally speaking, when the resolution's adopted in plenary, it's the governments that have the decision-making power in plenary. So, um, but again, the private sector has a very strong role in, in all of that work. And, and, and the resolution itself does address itself not only to governments, but to our sector members and encourages them to, uh, as I read out one of the provisions, and it, it talks to, to, to companies to uh, try and reduce their emissions. And also there's uh, language in the resolution, which I don't think I put on the screen, encourages not only governments, but private companies who are sector members to be involved in all these processes, in particular, uh, the negotiations in Poland. But let's, uh, I hope we can get back to the, the coalition. Again, I, I really would like to hear some concrete suggestions for what we can be doing to make a difference. Yes, yeah, somebody who hasn't spoken before from China. Hi, uh, my name is Liu Chuang uh, from Chinese Academy of Sciences, and I'm a uh, uh, representative of the uh, Chinese Association uh, for Science and Technology uh, in the IT and uh, uh, climate change. So and, uh, I, th I have a uh, suggestion to the uh, to the uh, ITU uh, for the uh, ICT and the climate change. I think there are two things at least we uh, we uh, uh, are the advantage for us to do. One is the uh, green ICT. Uh, so that is how ICT in industry can uh, means reduce uh, emission uh, uh, carbon emission uh, and and. Uh, and I think uh, uh, the lady from Japan uh, gave a, a very good uh, presentation about the how to calculate and uh, provide a, a good uh, in the methodology. So at least uh, it's uh, for very good uh, for us to to uh, uh, exchange ideas. And I think this uh, need to uh, continue to work on this. Need uh, this is very useful for 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 us. And the second, I think that's for the ICT can do this is definitely this how use ICT technology to uh, to do the uh, climate re re uh, climate change research and also uh, early warning and this is a focus on the applications uh, and uh, uh, the quick response and the disaster mitigation several things and this morning I think a gentleman from NIPA gave a very good presentation about that. So I think at least the two things we uh, we uh, uh, for us to do, and uh, I think that's is a more broad uh, uh, areas, more uh, great job for us to do. So from China side, I would like to say a little bit of word about the China. So in China Association for the Science and Technology, uh, uh, the set up uh, two special uh, national committee. Uh, uh, one is uh, uh, national committee for the um, ICT. Uh, and, and another is the uh, uh, National Committee uh, uh, for the Climate Change for Environment. So, uh, and I, this morning, like I said, this is very good. This we bring the two together. Uh, so normally in the in the ICT person, though, you know, there are there is another uh, error. 
And the climate change environment issue is another uh, professional issue. So there are two different groups. So in the, in the end now, we uh, link the two uh, areas together. This is an excellent job I, from, uh, from my personal uh, point of view. So I think there's a China Association for Science and Technology and uh, really want to join this uh, because uh, you know, we, this uh, association, there are a uh, thousand uh, uh, scientific communities uh, in China. And then uh, uh, collect all the high level uh, professors. And also we work together with the China government and uh, give some suggestions and uh, advices uh, to the government. So we have a very strong uh, uh, influence to the China government. So I think that's uh, so we, uh, and I, uh, here I would like to put the Chinese Association uh, for Science and Technology as a, a member uh, to join this. And uh, we are very, very uh, want to work together with you and about this. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much. We're, we're very pleased to have you as a member. I, I think it's getting, it, we're past six o'clock. I'd like to take maybe one or two more comments and questions and then, and then uh, maybe summarize. Okay, uh, I'm Fernando Botello, I'm a consultant. Uh, most of my work is related to disability and assistive technologies. Um, I, uh, to me, it's interesting, it, it, there's great complexity in this, this entire discussion because ICT, the, the industry, uh, touches on every conceivable industry out there. Uh, on, uh, and there is enormous, enormous potential for for it to improve efficiency of every conceivable process. However, potential does not mean fact. And, uh, and there, there are some, some really significant elephants in the room that I, I can think of, you know, obvious and big issues. For example, uh, we, we have seen, you know, computers doing uh, the same exact uh, uh, things that they were doing 10 years ago, except now they need, you know, uh, graphical processors that accelerate, you know, all kinds of graphical accelerators and 10 times the amount of memory and 20 times the amount of uh, hard disk space and, and proportionally much more electricity to send the same email you were sending 10 years ago. Um, so in many ways, we could think of, you know, is it time to think of, uh, my, what, what is it called in the automobile sector, miles? Miles per gallon. Mile, you know, gallons per mile or, or whatever. Are we, are we going to maybe think of ways of measuring performance uh, in, the, in the computer world? And I'm not saying I have an answer to this, but I think we have to to keep in mind that if we're going to start with the easiest possible uh, ways of saving very, very large amounts of, of carbon emissions, of, of pollution, let's say, uh, changing a few, you know, changing lines of code, th th there's very little I can think of that can make such a, such a large impact. Mm -hmm. So if, just to finish, if we can optimize Windows XP, for example, so much more than it was in its original shape, so much so that it can run on, on the OLPC computer, on the laptop, which is one of the most efficient laptops I can think of, you know, you can just imagine what we can do with Vista and, and so many other packages out there. Well, thank you very much for that comment. I think it, it really touches on an earlier comment on the importance of consumer behavior. But consumers can only behave in an efficient way if they get the information. And a lot of that information is lacking right now in ICT products. The other thing which has been an important part of UN work is the whole procurement issue, which we haven't talked about. But this clearly is so when, when companies are buying ICT equipment, this is also something, a message to get to them that they need to be more, more aware of the energy use of, of the equipment they're buying. I think maybe, Don, the, the last comment, and I'll, then I'll try and sum up. Oh, two more. Okay, sorry. Yes, Don. Yeah, it's actually, uh, sorry, actually a, a question, Art. Uh, related to the methodology and building on uh, what we heard from Bill St. Arnaud before we lost him, very important issue of rebound effects yeah. when things become more efficient, consumption rises, and there's a possibility of benefits being undercut. Uh, two questions. Did the Chessing study uh, objections there, are they net? So that uh, 
I can answer part of the question, Don. I'm not sure about the Jesse study, uh, what, how, to what extent they measured that effect. With respect to the ITU work in the focus group, we discussed that last week in Geneva. And we have, uh, using the formal IT, uh, procedures that we have in the ITU, as you may be, remember, um, in standards work, there's something called a liaison statement, where you ask another standards body about what they're doing. We have sent some statements out on this effect to ask the OECD, among others, who are uh, more the economists and more expert in that area, what they think, and to what extent we should build that into our methodology. Uh, one thing that we did ask is we asked the European, Union, the European Commission, and when they developed their codes of conduct, whether they had considered rebound effects, and the answer was no. When they came up with these targets in Europe, apparently they, they did not worry about the rebound effect. But it's an open question for the focus group. We're now asking for input into it, and we'll see uh, what the re reply is and how we can accommodate the replies. I think there was one more request for the floor from, from, uh, from uh, CDSMS. CDSMS. And by the next meeting, I'll know your, nom your name, but. Um, okay. Is the microphone on? Okay. My name is Jaya again from CSDMS. Um, my, I have a, a suggestion for the Dynamic Coalition. Um, we, in, uh, we conduct an annual conference in India, um, and the next one is announced for August. And my uh, invitation is uh, uh, for consideration for our next meeting. So six, seven months down the line, we would have had uh, some more concrete um, uh, you know, engagement with a lot more partners. And uh, we are happy to actually spread the word and get more, more people engaged, especially from South Asian region. So I, I invite a, a proposal, I mean, I, I make a proposal for the next meeting to happen um, on the lines uh, at the venue of the E-India conference that we are hosting. And uh, so that will be in August in the first week. It is held uh, in Delhi. Uh, so we, I have a proposal for consideration. If we can uh, okay. plan something, then we would be happy to host it. Okay. Well, let me, uh, before everybody leaves, let me try and summarize a couple of points that I, uh, from our, our discussion today. Um, certainly from the IT perspective, we, we have already started a website. And we will expand it and, in, in addition, put on, on the website the presentations and some of the discussions from today. I will also undertake to do a report of the meeting so we can summarize our discussions of today about the coalition. Uh, one thing that we're doing under the resolution uh, from, that we have from our membership is to do a calendar of climate change events. So that's something I think we can also post on this website. We're trying to be a rather comprehensive listing of all events, not just ITU events, but there are many events in climate change. They are beginning to spread throughout the world so that people in different regions uh, can go to an event and not have to travel so far. We will certainly uh, put that event, and we very much appreciate your invitation and see what we can organize. I would hope as much as possible we can do some of these events making better use of remote tools. Uh, in the focus group that we have in ITU, we, most of our meetings are by conference call. And I think if we're sometimes, if we're a little less ambitious and not worry so much about the video, uh, with the audio works fine. So we can, we can also uh, think about having some conference calls to, to discuss the work of the coalition. Um, I think we also, uh, I didn't see anybody say no, we can consider having some kind of statement to the IGF about the importance of this work. I'd be happy to, uh, to try and put together something very short. Uh, and then circulate it to all of you uh, for your review online. Uh, I also, we will undertake in ITU to do the logistics for the coalition, so we will establish an email list. Um, I have all your names and addresses, so we will send an email out. And just to, uh, I'm very happy to see so many entities that have uh, agreed to join the coalition, and so I will confirm that by email as well. Um, I also did want to mention that we, I think we've said it, but we will have our three, two or three symposia this coming year on climate change. We also are trying to have them in different parts of the world so that people uh, can travel much shorter distances if they want to participate. And that will be in our calendar of events, but I can mention we will have one in Ecuador in July 9th to 11th. Uh, we will have an event in Cairo. I don't know the exact dates, but probably sometime in late September. And we're also looking, uh, talking with Korea about having an event there, which is probably the closest location to here, here we are in, in India. So we will, I think, exchange information about, about that. Now, in the report of the meeting, I'd like to just summarize our discussions. But I think it would be uh, add to the report very much if each organization present, and that's why I think some left early, 
uh, could maybe send me a paragraph, not more. I don't like to, you know, let's not do a lot of homework, but a paragraph on your key activities in climate change. So I would ask every one of you from uh, respect of your entity to send me a, a paragraph, no more, uh, on your main activities in climate change. And again, I would invite any further suggestions about what the coalition can do. And then we can post that report online, as well as uh, trying to develop a, a joint statement uh, in terms of internet governance. There is a lot of work going on in climate change, and I think it's important that we try and focus as much as possible on the internet aspects of it. And I think we've had, we've had some good discussions this morning, this afternoon. Uh, from my own perspective, I, I think the issue of data servers is an extremely important one, and I hope we can interface a bit more with uh, some of the ongoing work in that area. So I, maybe to summarize, we will, we, will, we will create the email list so that we can all talk to each other very quickly through the email. Uh, we will have a calendar of events. We will take on board the idea of, of having some kind of uh, get together, either virtually or physically, uh, in connection with the Ian the event. I will uh, do a report of the meeting, but I will ask for your input, a paragraph per entity, as to your main activities. Um, I will circulate a draft statement. And again, I would invite further thoughts about you know, what, you, what you think this coalition can do. Uh, the spirit of WIS is very much in you know, the IGF is multi-stakeholder approach. We are almost there in the IT, but there's still, uh, there's still constituencies that we don't completely address. And so I think this is a very important adjunct and a, a very important way of working to really bring all of these uh, different viewpoints together. I also would think, ask everybody to think a little bit about how, what we can do in terms of consumers. I think in the end of the day, consumers are going to be the ones who make the difference. You know, there's a, there's a great, and I'll close, there is a great uh, old blues song that, you know, everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. Everybody wants to save the planet, but nobody wants to turn off their remote, and they don't want to turn off their laptop, but sometimes you have to do it. So I think uh, we also, I'd appreciate input, uh, you know, what we can do in consumer behavior, and thoughts about that, how we can inform our work both to governments, but also to uh, consumers as well. And, and in our work methods, we will, of course, try and set a good example. So I want to thank everybody very much for their participation, both this morning and this afternoon. I think it's, uh, it was good to have our first physical meeting. I feel a bit more dynamic now. Um, I'm hoping by the next time we all get together, the technology will, will, will allow us to work even better in a, in a remote environment. And again, thank you all very much. And uh, probably see you around the next couple of days. Excuse me? Uh, my email. I'll send it around. I have, I have the list and I'll send it around. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, sure, go ahead.